In this lecture, I want to talk to you about pulse width modulation, which is a bit of a mouthful, which is why we usually call it just PWM. But all it refers to is generating a periodic square wave. Okay, so a square wave looks like this. For some time it's on, sometimes it's off. Periodic means it keeps repeating itself with the same period. We've generated signals like this already. We've turned a pin high, left it on with a delay, then we turned it off with another delay, and we put it inside a while loop. So we have a continuous repeating on-off signal. And we use that to blink an LED. Or if it was going fast enough, it would control how bright the LED appeared. If the on cycle is short compared to the period, the LED would be dim. If the on period was high, then it would be brighter. At when T on and the period T are the same length, it's always on, so it's as bright as that it could be. Now PWM is a very important concept in electronics. And in fact, your PEC has two pins that have modules that will generate uh, these continuous square waves for you so that once you set them up in code, they just work that way forever. And you never have to come back unless you want to change something about that signal. Now the pins that have that are CCP1, that's pin 13 on your PIC, and CCP2, pin 12 on your PIC. So those are the PWM output pins. So you can generate two square waves. They're not going to be entirely different, and I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Now you'll notice there's a little subscript, a, a superscript here, one. Well, there's a note if you're reading through the data sheet that says you can switch between using pin 12 and pin 24 as the second PWM pin. All you have to do is change a setting in the configuration uh, setup. And I'll show you how to do that later. Okay. But first, let's go back and talk a little bit about the two signals. So the two signals that you generate have to have exactly the same period. What's different about them is how long they're on for. One other thing that's the same is when this guy turns on, the second guy turns on too. Okay? So the rising edge for the start of the signal is the same. Right? OK, so let's go and look at the code for this. So go to the program. Here's the program. We need our typical xc.h file because we're using functions that refer to the PIC. And as we said, configuration bits, we almost always want that. Now, PWM is a timing feature, and the timer that's associated with it is called Open Timer 2. There's only one setting that we have to worry about. Right? These other two settings, you leave them like that. Timer int off and t2 post 1 to 1. This guy is a number that affects the signals that we get out. We only have three choices. These are uh, multipliers for our signal. They can only be 1, 4, or 16. Those are the only possible choices. No other choices. For open timer 2. Now, <clears throat> to generate the signal, we define the period of the signal using a function called open PWM1. So this is going to work for that first pin, CCP1. And this number is called the period. The formula is that the period for this signal is period plus 1, so 142, times the prescalar value, 
which here was four, times how many instruction cycles, or TCY, we want. So in this case, open PW1 with 141 gives us 564 TCY. If I'd used one, this would be a one, and this would be 142. With 16, it would be four times bigger. This variable, uh, 141, can only have values between 0 and 255. Those are the only possible settings. So you can't have every period that you might want. To, this defines the period, but it doesn't actually turn the signal on. Right? Because it's just a period. You need to know how long you want it on. That's the purpose of this function. Set the duty cycle for PWM1. The duty cycle is just a phrase common electronics for how long you want it on. So here is called T duty cycle, but here I just called it the on time. So the formula for that choice is the duty cycle, which is whatever the number is in here, right? divided by 4 times the prescalar value that's this guy again, in TCY. Remember, in PICS, usually you're talking about time <coughs> in units of TCY, but TCY changes with your operating speed. So one TCY here is one over a million. Uh, sorry, that should be four right here. Four. Okay. And so the period would be 564 times 4 over a million seconds. And the duty cycle here would be 284 times 4 over a million. Very short times. The signal, 284 over 564, is 50%. Half the time it would be on. If you want to get the second signal, you would use similar functions. Open PWM2. This guy always has to have the same number as this guy. If you want to change the on time, you can certainly do it for this one. Right Here I'm using half the value here. So the on time is only one quarter of the full period. So those two signals can be very different from one another. Okay. But it's always the same total period. Both signals start on the same rise. <coughs> now as I mentioned earlier, your signals uh, start on the same rise, and but I have two of them. What I really mentioned earlier was that you can switch which pin you're using for CCP2. Do you want to use pin 12 or pin 24? If you want to switch over to pin 24, you go to configuration bits and you put this command in. Go back to the program, configuration bits, put in this configuration statement. Compile the job, and now pin 24 will generate that square wave. If you want it to be the default value, right? you can change port BE to port C, uh, which takes it back to pin 12, or you could just leave it default. Okay. So the code for generating a square wave is very simple. Okay. We'll do things like connect LEDs to those pins. We could connect a little speaker, and we'll generate little buzzy sounds out of the speaker. So these take a lot of jobs away from things that we actually have to program for. right? Because once you have those modules, they're easy to set up. 
and you don't have to worry about ch doing any changes inside of, say, a while loop. So, great. That's easy. We can generate PWM signals on these two pins. Some picks have more pins than this. Okay? The only problem, and this is what we'll discuss in the next section, is you only have certain choices of this prescaler, certain choices of period and duty cycle, and certain choices for your operating speed of the pick. That means you cannot always get the frequency or period that you want and the on time you want. But you should be able to get close to it. And in the next section, we'll show you how you do an actual calculation for which values of scalar, period, and duty cycle, and oscillation speed, oscillator speed that you choose for the signal you want. Now, as I've said, the difficulty is not writing a little program to use the PWM module. It's the calculations that you need to do to figure out what choices of the, uh, of the parameters in PWM to get that signal. Here's an example calculation. It says generate a 200 hertz square wave signal with a 30% duty cycle. Now, the first thing to know is we're not asking that exactly. In electronics, you're normally happily happy to be within a few percent of anything that's requested. For instance, remember in the serial communication, as long as you were within about 5%, you could use the serial COM port. Right. Uh, same way here. So a 200 hertz signal means we need a period of 1 over 200 hertz, which is 0 0.005 seconds. 30% of that, which is the on or duty cycle time, is 0 0.0015 seconds. Now the formulas that we have for doing our calculations are these. Okay. TPWM equals period plus 1 times the prescaler times TCY, where TCY is 4 over F OST, the oscillator frequency. Remember, that default is 1 megahertz. So you have three numbers, period, prescaler, and F OST, that you can play with to get as close to the required time as possible. Similarly with TDC. Although, once you've chosen FOSC and Prescaler for TPWM, you just need to get the correct duty cycle. So here's the calculation. Here's the formula again. Instead of TCY, I've written it in terms of 4 over FOSC. I'm going to bring FOSC over to the other side. And what we see, we've got period plus 1 times Prescaler times 4. The maximum value that can be is 16,384. 256 times 16 times 4. Let's start with our default frequency of 1, me of one megahertz. 0 0.005 times 1 megahertz is 5,000. That's less than this. That means we can get a value of period and prescalar that will approximately work. We could have used any oscillator speed that's less than 4 megahertz. If this was 4, this would be 20,000, and that would be too big. There'd be no way to get the correct result. So 2 megahertz would work. This would be 10,000. 125 megahertz would work, and that's... I don't even want to calculate it. Okay, okay. so if we have 5,000 over here, and this is less than 16,000, then one of the first things you should be able to see, since Prescaler only has three values, 1, 4, or 16, that 4 wouldn't work. Only the Prescaler 16 will work. Right? Because if I made this 4, this would be just over 4,000. 
and 4,000 is less than 5,000. So prescalar in this case must be set to 16 for this to work. Then we take our formula and find what period is. Period plus 1 must equal this number, 5,000, divided by the prescalar, which we said has to be 16, and this number, 4. That works out to 78.125. But period must be an integer, and so we're going to round down so that period is 77. Perfect. So now we have the value of period. If we have the value of period, the next thing to do is calculate what the duty cycle is. Going back to this original formula, and because of the way they stated it as 30%, let's take the ratio of these two guys. The percent duty cycle, the ratio of these guys, is calculated by these numbers. Prescalar and TCY no longer matter when I look at the percent duty cycle, since they've already been set for TPWM. So the duty cycle is whatever the percentage we want times 4 times period plus 1. So the calculation says that works out to 93.6, but we have to get an integer. So we're going to round up to 94. We could have tried 93, but that's likely to be a little bit off. So now we've got a value for period, 77, and a value for the duty cycle. Let's always check our calculations at the end. So going back to the original formula, but using the number we found, 77, plus 1 times 16 times 4 over a million. This is how much the period is. And if we compare that to what we wanted, 0 0.005, we're only 0.16% different. Bang on, as far as we're concerned. Same way with the duty cycle, plugging in the numbers we found, we're only slightly over by about 0.27%. Excellent. All right. So we're very close. Being that close is really good. I actually have to let you know that we're not really that good. Uh, this is the minimum difference. The oscillator frequency of your chip, when I say the default is 1 megahertz, that's only good to a couple of percent. We'll show ways to make it more precise, but 1% is a reasonable approximation of the uncertainty in FOSC most of the time. But this is how you do your calculation. So to sum up, calculate what you want for the period and the duty cycle times. Choose a value of FOSC, generally at 1 megahertz and look at this formula here and see what you can play around with. You get multiple choices. More than one F OSC will give you the solution. Okay. That could be important if we want to be doing different frequencies, say changing from one frequency to another later. You get to play around with these. I normally find that using a spreadsheet helps me do these calculations. I can look at all the possible choices of prescalar and FOSC and see what gives me a value for a period between 0 and 255. That's it for now. There's some practice problems on this page. You should try and do them. Make sure you get the right answers. Bye-bye.